Welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into all the naval units in Conflict of Nations. We'll explore the strengths and weaknesses of each naval unit, how to effectively use them in coastal or deep waters, which units they counter, and finally, how to build the ultimate naval stack. We will first start talking about corvettes. Corvettes are the smallest and weakest naval units. However, it's ideal as an inexpensive beginner in coastal protection. Corvettes stand out because they're the only ships built using supplies and electronics, making them a great choice if you're rich in supplies but short on components. It's crucial to remember that corvettes have a significant weakness. They lose half of their health in the open ocean, making them vulnerable in deep sea battles. After the initial week of gameplay, relying on corvettes becomes less advisable. This is when other naval units, which are vastly superior in strength and capability, come into play and can easily overpower corvettes. If you want to start building your fleet of corvettes, you'll need a level 2 naval base and an arms industry. Regarding what can counter corvettes, it's almost easier to list what doesn't counter corvettes. Due to their lower health and attack power, corvettes find themselves at a disadvantage against nearly every other naval unit. Frigates and destroyers outmatch them with superior health and damage. Cruisers bring them down with their extended range, higher health, and greater damage. Even attack submarines and ballistic submarines pose a significant threat if corvettes venture into deep waters. Furthermore, corvettes have a critical weakness and that is their lack of anti-air capabilities which makes them sitting ducks for air attacks and cruise missiles. This immense vulnerability to air forces further emphasizes the corvette's role as a coastal defender rather than a deep-sea combatant as the game progresses. Given their limitations and vulnerabilities, I personally find corvettes not worth it. Now, let's shift our focus to frigates. Frigates are medium-sized, versatile combat ships that excel in providing comprehensive anti-air coverage for allied naval units. Equipped with radar capabilities, frigates can detect air, ground, and naval threats from a distance, boasting an impressive anti-air range of 150. While they come with a higher production cost compared to corvettes, the investment in frigates pays off with their superior weaponry and advanced technology, making them invaluable assets from the mid to late game stages. Frigates are especially effective against incoming missiles and aircraft, serving as protective guardians for your fleet against air attacks. Consider frigates as strategic support units. They might not be the first on your list to build, but incorporating them into your naval forces ensures an amazing defense against air forces and missile attacks. To deploy frigates, ensure you have a level 2 naval base and an arms industry at your disposal. Despite these drawbacks, frigates shouldn't be entirely dismissed. In specific scenarios, you're up against opponents with a significant reliance on cruise missiles or a powerful air force. In these types of cases, frigates can be a game changer. As for my personal opinion, through I tend to not build frigates unless I am facing an enemy with a big air force and lots of cruise missiles. Sweet, let's now talk about destroyers. Destroyers are the most used naval vessel in the game. Destroyers are fast and agile fleet escort vessels designed to protect larger ships against both submarine and surface threats. Equipped with radar and sonar technologies, destroyers are capable of revealing stealth naval vessels as well. Additionally, they have some standoff capabilities after a few researches are completed such as the launching of cruise missiles. The requirements to build destroyers are a naval base level 3 and a arms industry. When it comes to their weaknesses and counters, the list is short. Primarily, cruisers pose a significant threat to destroyers due to their superior attack range, damage output, and health. And the other unit that counters destroyers are Air Force units, and this is simply due to the fact that destroyers do not do any anti-air damage. Despite that, the only real use for destroyers, and what destroyers do better than every other naval unit is their attack on submarines. They can completely destroy submarines thanks to their high damage against them. I personally don't suggest building destroyers as the benefits are not that many and there are also better units out there. Let's now talk about cruisers, potentially one of the best units in the game. Cruisers are the largest and most dangerous surface vessels in any fleet besides the aircraft carrier. Cruisers are also predominantly used as a platform to launch cruise missiles. 
Cruisers are heavily armed and they are used more as offensive kind of ocean going vessels that are equipped with radar in order to detect air, ground, and naval vessels. They are capable of launching three cruise missiles every 12 hours at high research levels. Additionally, they come with a good anti-air damage too. The requirements to build cruisers are a naval base level 4 and a arms industry. Cruisers can counter and destroy all naval ships except for one naval unit, and the only naval unit which can counter and destroy cruisers are submarines. This is due to the insanely low damage that cruisers do against submarines, so if you want to counter and destroy someone who is just spamming cruisers, then just spam submarines. Another potential non-naval counter to cruisers are cruise missiles, but only if the missiles are leveled high enough, because if not then the cruiser's anti-air will destroy them. Additionally, it is important to note that cruisers are quite expensive too, with the starting cost of 3,500 components per cruiser. Despite their high cost and counters, I personally recommend building cruisers. This is because cruisers dominate naval engagements against virtually all surface ships and, when combined with other units, can form an unbeatable naval force. In the hashtag best stack section, I'll delve into how pairing cruisers with other units can solidify your naval supremacy. Perfect. Let's now talk about aircraft carriers. The aircraft carrier is much more dangerous strategically than it is on the basis of combat properties. Although some naval weaponry and anti-air slash missile is available, this warship becomes exceptionally dangerous when carrying naval aircraft. You can also find a radar equipped with the carrier, a standard for such an important fleet. However, the aircraft carrier is not the best when attacking other naval units in their own, and aircraft carriers can also be seen as hugely expensive. The requirements to build aircraft carriers are a naval base level 5 and a arms industry. On their own, aircraft carriers are somewhat vulnerable, with limited offensive capabilities against naval units and air forces. However, when complemented with a strong air force and helicopters, they can significantly damage naval units lacking anti-air defenses, such as destroyers, submarines, and corvettes. Yet, it's important to note the high cost associated with aircraft carriers, demanding more components, electronics, manpower, and rare materials than any other ship. Personally, I hesitate to recommend building this unit due to its inability to perform effectively in isolation. To leverage an aircraft carrier's full potential, you'll need to invest heavily in air units and additional ships for protection, which can divert resources and research time away from other priorities. If you decide to incorporate aircraft carriers into your strategy, consider doing so in the late game when you can afford the necessary support and protection they require. Perfect, let now get into the submarine space and talk about attack submarines. The first type of submarine we will talk about is the attack submarine. Attack submarines are specifically designed and equipped to destroy other submarines and surface vessels. Additionally, another great bonus the attack submarine has is to be able to maintain stealth when not attacking. These submarines perform better in deep waters as when not in deep waters they lose 50% of their health and damage. Additionally, attack submarines are able to launch cruise missiles. The requirements to build attack submarines are a level 3 naval base and a arms industry. As for the counters submarines counter every naval unit except for destroyers, this is due to the high damage of destroyers against submarines. However, attack submarines are the best when it comes down to destroying cruisers, they absolutely shatter them. I personally do recommend building submarines, but only for mid to late game, when people are starting to build cruisers. This is also the best naval unit to counter high-ranked players, as higher-ranked players tend to build cruisers quite often. Additionally, if strategically placed you can detect and destroy every single unit that comes to your homeland. Sweet, let's now talk about ballistic submarines. Ballistic missile submarines are the strongest nuclear deterrence weapons platform, equipped to survive and retaliate with deadly precision against any attack enemy power. Unfortunately, ballistic submarines are vulnerable in shallow coastal waters with a reduced damage their 50% HP. The main purpose of ballistic submarines is to launch ballistic missiles. The requirements to build ballistic missile submarines are a level 4 naval base, a secret weapons lab level 1, and an arms industry. As for the counters, they are nearly countered by every unit due to their low damage. 
Now, unless you're planning to launch ballistic missiles, these ballistic submarines are useless. I recommend focusing on attack submarines instead. Additionally, launching ballistic missiles, while impactful, comes with high costs and a significant negative impact on your morale. Given these drawbacks, it's usually better to invest your resources and strategic efforts elsewhere. Awesome! Now that we've gone over the traditional ships, let's set up a naval force that can counter and destroy everyone's navy. For this top-tier naval lineup, we're focusing on cruisers, attack submarines, and officers. With these units, you can counter virtually any unit in the game. Cruisers excel at taking down ships, while attack submarines protect against cruiser and submarine threats. Properly utilized, this combination makes you unbeatable. Let's now talk about the ideal naval formations and strategies. As for the primal naval force, start with an experienced naval captain officer early in the game, pairing them with four cruisers. This force serves both offensive and defensive purposes, acting as your primary means to overpower enemy ships. However, it's wise to steer clear of engaging attack submarines with this group. Then, for the next task force, we will have a primal submarine task force. For this, equip a renowned skipper submarine captain with four attack submarines. This group should operate in deep waters to avoid the penalties applied in coastal areas where they lose half their health. This task is effective against submarines, cruisers, frigates, and corvettes. But they are vulnerable to destroyers, so try to avoid confrontations with destroyers. Leave the destroyers to your primary naval force. Those are the two main tasks you should focus on building. After they are built, continue building groups of five cruisers and five submarines, adhering to the strategic placements mentioned. Let's now talk on the research and which research we should prioritize. Firstly, we want to focus on upgrading cruisers to level 3 early on to unlock the 100 range capability, allowing you to strike without retaliation. Then gradually level them up. As for the submarines, we also want to gradually level up our submarines, because when maxed they will receive a 100 range capability too. Perfect! If you want to further enhance your naval capabilities, consider integrating cruise missiles into your fleet. These missiles are particularly effective against naval vessels lacking anti-air defenses, such as cruisers and corvettes. Both submarines and cruisers are capable of launching these missiles, adding a versatile offensive option to your naval strategy. I recommend focusing on conventional missiles for these cruise missiles. Since while chemical and nuclear options might seem tempting due to their destructive power, they come with high costs and potential morale penalties that can undermine your broader campaign efforts. Additionally, you should prioritize your cruise missile research to improve your cruise missiles quickly. Advancements in missile technology will not only increase their damage output, but also their health, and once your missiles have sufficient health, they can penetrate cruisers' anti-air defenses and destroy cruisers making your fleet an even more formidable force on the high seas. Awesome! You now know about every traditional naval unit in the game, and you also know what the best naval tasks are and are able to create a task that destroys every naval unit. If this video helped you out, please consider subscribing so you can keep getting better at Conflict of Nations. Good luck!